please welcome William Rickert, Chair, Board of Trustees. Good afternoon, everyone. As Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Teachers College, I have the honor of officially opening today's ceremony and being the first to congratulate the 2018 master's graduates of Teachers College. The diplomas you'll receive today are not just rewards for the courses, papers, and exams you've completed. Because they are TC degrees, they are proof that you have collaborated with some of the most of the best minds in your field, that you are ready to confront the biggest challenges, and that you have what it takes to become outstanding leaders and change makers. Many of you will take on the noble profession of teaching, armed with the rigorous combination of theory, practice, and specialized training that only TC can provide. There is no higher or more urgent calling than the shaping of future generations, and we, we salute all of our teachers here today. <clears throat> but preparing teachers is only one way that Teachers College fulfills its mission of advancing education and improving the lives of individuals, families, and communities. TC graduates are dedicated to increasing human well-being both in and out of schools and classrooms and across the lifespan as principals and superintendents, as artists and art administrators, as psychologists and health practitioners, and as leaders of every stripe. For more than 130 years, TC scholars have discovered new ways to understand the complex forces that shape our minds, our bodies, and our relationships with each other and the world around us. Their foresight led to the creation of many fields, such as social studies education, special education, and inclusive education, fields that many of you will now advance in your own distinct ways. Today, TC offers more than 100 programs in education, health, psychology, and leadership, all sharing a single aim, to help individuals and communities reach their full potential. Making all that possible and helping TC reach its full potential requires extraordinary leadership at the top. And TC has been blessed with great leadership for the past 12 years, and it is my very great pleasure to introduce the president of Teachers College, Susan H. Furman. Good afternoon. Welcome to a most joyous occasion as we honor the talented women and men who have already achieved so much and are just getting started. I give you the 2018 Master's Graduates of Teachers College. Congratulations, graduates. You made it. Congratulations as well to those who helped you make it to this day, our outstanding faculty and dedicated staff. And let's all show our appreciation to your families and partners for their love, encouragement, and support. Graduates, you now join the ranks of our 90,000 alumni who are leaders in education, psychology, and health. Like them, you now have the power to transform the learning environments of your schools and organizations and to expand educational opportunity for everyone, including our most marginalized and vulnerable fellow human beings. And like them, you're dedicating your lives and careers to the pursuit of social justice a TC tradition that literally goes back to our founder, Grace Hoadley Dodge. 
Grace Dodge was among the leaders of a growing movement of late 19th century uh, educators and um, helpers to provide educational and social opportunities for low income and marginalized populations. Like her contemporary Jane Addams, who founded settlement houses where people from different socioeconomic backgrounds could share ideas and information, Grace was bound and determined to improve the lives of struggling families. It was her unique vision to establish a college that would prepare teachers to work with immigrant students and their families, who had recently fled poverty, war, and prejudice and we're still encountering xenophobia and economic peril. It was also Grace Dodge's brilliance to recognize the need for a new kind of educator, one with the skills, cultural understanding, and self-awareness to understand and address immigrants' educational health and psychological needs. Armed with this deeper knowledge, this new type of educator could help immigrants in their communities achieve economic mobility, and social equality. Thanks to Grace Dodge, Teachers College quickly became a force for increasing educational opportunity as a path to greater social justice. But also implicit in Grace's vision was another TC hallmark, the value of research and the notion that for all of us at the college, regardless of our field of study or career path, experience guides and informs our scholarship and practice, as does evidence. This is what I want to stress today in my final convocation speech. TC is both a professional school and a research powerhouse. One can't do either preparing professional educators or preparing researchers about education well without the other. We rely on research to better understand phenomena, such as, for example, how the brain processes and responds to information. Research also helps us understand different populations that we teach. Why is that so important? Because you can't help people learn, grow, and reach their full potential if you don't truly understand who they are and the cultures they've come from. You can't engage in learning and changing without understanding the lens through which they see the world and building what, on what they already know. Finally, research informs our practice, guiding us to choose solutions and approaches that best serve our students. If these ideas came of age in Grace Dodge's time, they are absolutely imperative in our own. We live in an era, first of all, when advances in understanding of learn and learning is, are occurring almost daily on seemingly every front. And here at TC, we are leading the change. Imagine preparing teachers in an environment devoid of discoveries about how students develop insight, come to conceptual understanding, and learn to apply this knowledge to new situations. It would be like preparing a surgeon entirely through apprenticeship without grounding in anatomy, physiology, or pathology. And now, today, with the explosion of knowledge about how people learn, preparing teachers in an environment divorced from this intellectual ferment would be like preparing doctors without the emerging knowledge of the genome or individually targeted therapies. It would be profoundly conservative backward-looking, not forward-looking. Our teachers and teacher educators are making profound discoveries through close observation and engagement with the communities they serve. To cite just a couple of powerful examples, TC's Reimagining Education Initiative, led by faculty and students across five of our departments, is fashioning new strategies and approaches to make education relevant and compelling for the students who make up America's increasingly diverse classrooms. What does that look like? For Professor Mariano Soto Manning, it's about grounding research on how to teach students of color in the lives, voices, and values of people of color. For Professor Dietrich Price Dennis, 
it includes the use of technology as a means to engage young students in social issues relevant to their communities. For Professor Yolanda Celia Ruiz, it, for very popular professor Yolanda Seely Ruiz, it has meant encouraging students to bring their lives into the classroom and read through the lens of their own experience, an approach that includes pairing works such as Shakespeare's Sonnet 54 and Tupac Shakur's The Rose That Grew From Concrete. And for Professor Ansley Erickson, it has meant empowering students to study the history of systematic segregation in American cities. Meanwhile, Professor Lucy Calkins and the TC Reading and Writing Project, <laughs> thank you, continue to help hundreds of thousands of teachers enable young students to fulfill their potential as avid and skilled readers, writers, and inquirers. The project is perhaps best known for Lucy's inspiring books for the week-by-week -week curricula she and her team create for working teachers and for serving as both a think tank and a community of practice. But the project has also been a leader in helping New York schools explore the power of data-based instruction, developing a web-based assessment system that tracks measures of student learning, including growth in reading levels, higher order text-based thinking, and writing. These examples powerfully illustrate that for working teachers, being a researcher means constantly reflecting on one's practice and then learning and adapting new approaches to foster conditions that optimize learning for different students and communities. The Reimagining Education Initiative and the TC Reading and Writing Project also remind us that pedagogy isn't just a fancy word for teaching. It's a science. It's an evidence-based way of organizing and preventing material in ways that are most appropriate to the topic and the audience that we will be learning about. And above all, these examples powerfully affirm the value of research-based graduate schools of education. How, after all, can any policymaker, school leader, or teacher afford to be ignorant of such efforts? the results they are achieving, and the information they are providing. Attending a research-based school is critically important because emerging research prepares you for tomorrow, not just for today. Confining professional training to just observing current good practice is profoundly short-sighted, particularly when knowledge is increasing exponentially. Graduates, your TC education has prepared you to translate evidence that's been generated by research into practice and to evaluate the results. You will gear what you have learned to the specific content, context and communities in which you work. Of course, many of you are already engaged in that work. I mentioned the TC Reading and Writing Project a moment ago and the concept of reflective teaching and practice. Nuor Jalul was drawn to TC precisely because, in her words, as a teaching intern in Beirut, she had fallen in love with the workshop approach developed by the Reading and Writing Project. During her senior year in college, she came to TC for a summer workshop with Lucy. Four years later, she enrolled at TC to pursue her graduate degree as a literacy specialist. Her coursework here, along with her observations of students in New York City and Long Island classrooms, steeped Noor in solid research on the practical applications of core leadership, staff development, and mentoring principles. Noor put plans to put her experience as an educator and researcher to work in Lebanese schools. She says she will forever be grateful to TC for versing her in theory and practice because, as she says, this is what teaching is all about. Noor, I couldn't agree more. Congratulations. Another TC student who is combining theory and practice to make a difference in the world is art an art education graduate, C.J. Riley III. C.J. Riley has focused his research on Nepal, 
a country that is dominated by agriculture but suffers from widespread food insecurity, leaving 37% of the population suffering from stunting. As part of its food security efforts, the government of Nepal has made a concerted push for more innovative growing methods and more productive crop choices, such as macadamia nuts, which are a good source of both food and income. This is where CJ comes in. Here at TC, he learned how 3D printing and virtual reality could create more effective educational materials for fledgling macadamia farmers and improve agricultural yields. Working in the Myers studio, Riley used 3D printing to create tree models and educational tools to help Nepalese farmers not only adopt best practices in nursery and grafting techniques, but also to distribute macadamia nuts throughout the country and compete in the world market. Next stop for CJ will be the Philippines, where he will be working with college students and volunteers to help farmers develop new crop options and techniques. CJ, well done. Jacqueline Briggs is another 2018 graduate who's who is creating and applying new knowledge to remarkable effect. Jacqueline came to TC with a unique background as a trained vocalist who permanently lost her hearing in one ear after an accident. Her doctors told her that a future in music was not in the cards. Those doctors didn't know Jacqueline Briggs. Rather than abandon her dream, Jacqueline underwent intensive music therapy with a technique by which vibrations picked up by her bare feet were transmitted to the neural cortex that controls singing. The combination of muscle memory and resolve led her to earn a music degree in college and discover a new passion and goal to introduce the joy of music to the hearing disabled. Jacqueline came to Teachers College to fulfill her dream by pursuing two complementary master's degrees, one in music and music education and the other in TC's deaf and hard of hearing program. My professor said, you can't do this, Jacqueline says. They've essentially allowed me to push through the boundaries and barriers and I showed what I can do here. Jacqueline has been working with other students to develop a deaf music curriculum with a New York based composer. I am betting many more hearing disabled people will soon be picking up good musical vibrations thanks to the work of Jacqueline Briggs. Bravo, Jacqueline. <laughs> Graduates, you are the seers and shapers of the future. In this room are creators of beautiful works of art and music who will inspire new generations to view and engage the world more imaginatively. Others among you will prepare students from the earliest grades through college to achieve basic and then more sophisticated literacy and language skills. Or perhaps you'll specialize in the critical work of teaching the citizens of the future to respect, appreciate, and critically evaluate our past and also to undertake productive collabor collaborations to assure our future. But all of you, educators, artists, administrators, scholars, leaders, all of you will have a hand in changing the trajectories of the lives you touch for the better, and they will change you. Why? Because your TC degrees stand for more than a resolve to confront what is wrong in our society and to make it right. They're also a summons for you to continue to deepen your knowledge and understanding of the students you teach and the communities you serve so you can work with them to achieve brighter futures. The challenges confronting our society are daunting, but my faculty colleagues and I are optimistic because we have taken the full measure of your talents, integrity, and readiness. We're confident that individually and collectively you will make the greatest possible difference in the world and that you will both be and create outstanding citizens in the course of your work. This is your time. Keep bright the chain of social justice 
and the pursuit of knowledge for the public good that began with the founding of Teachers College. And as researchers, remember the physicist David Deutsch's observation that all failures, all evils, are due to insufficient knowledge. In other words, when it comes to improving the world, we can never know too much. Congratulations. We have now reached the moment in this ceremony when we honor an extraordinary individual whose life's work has advanced the cause of education while upholding TC's core mission to foster excellence and equity in the fields we serve. Among those honored at past ceremonies were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Coretta Scott King, Senator George Mitchell, Pete Seeger, Thomas Friedman, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Gail Collins, Spike Lee, Linda Darling Hammond, Temple Grandin, and the Reverend Calvin O. Butts. This year, we honor four preeminent scholars and practitioners, Jelani Cobb, Eric Holder, Helene Gale, and Walter Michelle. I'm very pleased to welcome TC Professor William Gaudelli, joined by Provost Thomas James, to introduce Jelani Cobb. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates, and congratulations. Are you fired up? Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> it is my distinct pleasure and honor to invite our medalist, Jelani Cobb, to join us at the podium. I will now read his citation William Jelani Cobb. While journalism may be the rough draft of history, it enables us to understand moments of profound change. As a journalist, journalism professor, and historian, you have set the bar for such writing, serving as a public intellectual who advances the common good. Your great theme is hope, hope that people of different races may better understand each other Hope that we may break through the circumstances that divide us, and hope that racial justice will ultimately prevail in America. In your book, The Substance of Hope, Barack Obama and the Paradox of Progress, you called America's first black president a validation of King's promise, that we as a people will get to the promised land. Yet you also decried the term post-racial, and warned that President Obama would be hampered by the weight of his own symbolism. You proved prescient. Ensuing events taught us that racism and the legacy of slavery remain an all too vital, vibrant, and dynamic stream in American history, as you have written. In a New Yorker article subtitled The Parameters of Hope about the killing of Trayvon Martin, you concluded that the election of a black president and appointment of a black attorney general could not realistically remedy decades of complex relations between African American men and law enforcement. In Policing the Police, your groundbreaking frontline documentary, you spotlighted that relationship, immersing viewers in the tactics of the Newark Police Department. We admire your courage to accent a powerful historical moment with needed criticality. In the current political climate, you have since found reason to believe in a more horizontal ethic of leadership inspired by Ella Baker, the grassroots champion of civil rights who preferred 10,000 candles to a single spotlight. Speaking at Teachers College in 2016, you said that racism is best fought by what we teach young people about democracy. You have since emerged as the nation's foremost chronicler of the Black Lives Matter movement. Perhaps you envisioned the course your life would take when as a younger man, you took the name Jelani, which means in Kiswahili, great and powerful. We know that you will continue to write on because as you have said, a different world is possible. 
we join your hopeful call to action. Congratulations. Jelani Cobb, for combining brilliant scholarship and hard-hitting journalism with a commitment to social justice, for bringing nuance, insight, and passion to the study of racism, and for showing us all the way to a better future, we proudly present you with the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service. President Furman, wow, there's an echo in here. <laughs> Faculty, trustees, family members, and most importantly, the graduates of this 2018 class, thank you for the honor of being invited here today and for being allowed to speak to you. One of the first things I learned as an educator was that the less you say, the more people will remember. So I'll keep my comments as short as possible today. I will not offer you any advice this afternoon. You have spent the past two years being advised by one of the finest faculties of any graduate education program in the, in the country. But I would like to offer an observation. But before that, Congratulations to today's graduates. You are entering, that's right. You are entering the most noble of professions. Thomas Jefferson was correct when he said that a system of government, depending upon the will of the, the people, has no anchor save for that people's intelligence. And the work of cultivating that intellect, that rationality, that fundamental curiosity and engagement with the world has not ever been more crucial than it is today. And now, my observation. Education scholars like Patricia Albert Graham and Dana Goldstein and Diane Ravitch have outlined the ways in which our schools over the course of decades have increasingly shouldered the responsibilities of civic society. There's a reason why we receive both our immunizations and more often than not vote in the local elementary or middle or high school. This generation of teachers, however, is faced with no less of a task than shoring up American democracy and the fundamental decencies tolerance and understanding that makes it possible. This is not an abstract concern to me. Indeed, it is a deeply personal one. I am a native of Queens, New York. We have Queens people here, of course. <laughs> and the son of a high school educated mother who fled her native Bessemer, Alabama to earn her diploma from DuSable High School in Chicago and a father who completed only the third grade in Hazelhurst, Georgia, where he was born. The difference between their life and my life, in short, teachers. Both my parents left the South with the hope that education might make a difference, if not in their own lives, then certainly in the lives of their children. My earliest formative memories include sitting at our dining room table as my father taught me to trace the letters of the alphabet, my tiny hand dwarfed by his large one. In the afternoon, my mother took me to the New York Public Library, South Hollis Branch, to apply for my first library card. I'm a graduate of New York City Public Schools, a historically black university, that's right, a historically black university, Howard University, 
<laughs> I'll just do a roll call of all these places. You can just... And I completed my graduate school at a state institution, Rutgers University. You can fellow Rutgers person here. <laughs> to the extent that I have done anything to warrant the award being bestowed today, it has been facilitated by public institutions and more fundamentally by the sense of civic commitment that led people to fund those institutions so that they could carry out the life-changing work that they do. This is the basis of the hopeful narrative that undergirds what I suspect is your own reasoning in entering the field of education. Institutions matter. They make a difference in our lives and in the lives of those who come after us. I recognize this as my vantage point as a kid from Queens, but this is not solely an individual concern, given that the history of Queens has become relevant in ways that we might not ever have imagined were it not for a noted other Queens resident whose political outlook has been similarly shaped by his experience in the outer boroughs. The current president grew up in Jamaica Estates. I grew up in a place called South Jamaica. Those two communities bear precisely the relationship that their names would imply. One of them, mostly white and affluent, existed at the top of a hill. The other, mostly black, brown, and struggling for economic stability, existed at the bottom of it. We grew up 24 years apart on either side of a crucial set of developments in that place. In 1953, when Jackie Robinson, who was then playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers, purchased a home in Queens, a cross was burned near his property to indicate that he was not welcome. The tumultuous battles over school busing in Boston are firmly fixed in the minds of those of us who lived through those years or who have studied this period of American history and American education. Few can forget that jarring image of a white protester threatening to impale a black counter-protester with a flagpole draped in the American flag. But fewer of us know that the, these same kinds of riotous reactions to the prospect of school integration happened in Queens nearly a decade and a half earlier. Or that the psychologist Kenneth Clark, who along with his wife Mamie, designed the famous doll tests that were central to Thurgood Marshall's argument, winning arguments in Brown, v. Bo in Brown v. Board of Education, pointed to New York City's school segregation as a crucial concern right after the Supreme Court decision was handed down in 1954. Queens was, in those years, the second whitest borough of New York City. It existed as a kind of internal suburb, a landing place for the aspirational middle class of Manhattan and the Bronx. In 1965, United States immigration policies were liberalized, contributing to the kaleidoscope of cultures and ethnicities that populate this city and the country it belongs to. Queens was one of the first places where those changes manifested. It transformed rapidly from a mostly white borough to what it is now, the single most ethnically diverse county in the United States, where some 800 languages are spoken. This is the Queens I grew up in. I would, like, I would like to believe that this rapid diversity was welcomed, but the fact is that it was just as often a source of consternation and contempt. The 70s sitcom All in the Family depicted an embittered working class white man named Archie Bunker. Some of us are old enough to remember that show. Archie was a man confused by the changes happening around him and the speed of those developments. And the show was set, not coincidentally, in Queens, New York. My family, migrants from the South, were part of those changes, but not the only part of it. As a young man, I played right field for the Jamaica High School baseball team. The center fielder was Dominican. The left fielder was Indian. The first baseman was African-American. 
The second baseman was Colombian. The shortstop and two of the pitchers were Jewish. The catcher was Jamaican. We looked like the United Nations taking the field. We also sucked. <laughs> I'm almost certain that we never won more games than we lost. But I did take something valuable from the experience of attending a school with this broad swath of humanity. Many years ago, not long after 9-11, I took a flight from Atlanta to New York City. The memory of the attacks that day, of that day remained fresh in our minds, and flying was still a fraught experience. I boarded my flight and sat in an aisle seat about two-thirds of the way back. A few moments later, a tall, olive-skinned man boarded the plane. He wore a tequila on his head and sported a long beard. He was dressed in a white tunic and white pants. He read as Muslim in all capital letters. As he made his way down the aisle toward me, you could almost see the tension ratcheting up among other passengers. He walked past me and sat down in an aisle seat across from me, one row back. I turned and looked at him. Then I turned and looked again. Finally, I asked, excuse me, where are you from? He looked up and shot back, where are you from? A perfectly appropriate response under the circumstances. I'm from Queens, I responded. All right then, he said. And then I said, I'm asking because I think you're also from Queens. By now, everyone in the vicinity was paying close attention to our conversation. And if you are who I think you are, I continued, we were in the same breakdance crew in high school. <laughs> he squinted. And then a look of recognition passed across his face. Jelani, he asked. Shake, I said in reply. We stood up and hugged. The people around us exhaled. Clearly relieved by the assumption that no former breakdancer could possibly mean them any harm. I, on the other hand, felt good about the situation because, for once, I was the large black man making the white people around me feel more comfortable. <laughs> but the crucial point is that here is that where it was easy to look at my friend and see a template of otherness, a harbinger of animosity and therefore danger. When I looked up, I saw a classmate, a familiar face, a person whose home I'd visited and whose table I'd eaten at, and the best breakdancer I knew in my youth. Education is called upon to stand within the breach now in a way that it seldom has been. The roiling conflicts, the ease with which the most base instincts can be appealed to and hostilities exacerbated is stunning. Our schools and our teachers are central to this ideal of we the people particularly in an era where we, as we, have, we have witnessed such exaltation of the first person singular. Now, I'll change my mind and close with a small piece of advice. Hold fast to that spark of idealism that led you to pursue a career in education. It is the cornerstone of the world we live in and the down payment on the tomorrow we wish to build. The old adage says that a mind, once expanded, seldom returns to its former dimensions. This morning I got on a scale and lamentably thought the same thing about my waistline. That's a whole other subject. But we say a mind, once expanded, seldom refer re returns to its former dimensions. The same cannot be said for societies. We must constantly be mindful of the return of old animosities and tribalistic grievances. Democracy requires constant vigilance. Education 
is the only thing that makes democracy possible at this current moment. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome student speaker Amanda Najib, master's candidate, Department of Curriculum and Teaching. What a humbling honor it is to stand before all of you today. President Furman, Provost James, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, and the beautiful families and communities that have raised us. And a special shout out to my own family, without whom I would not be standing here today. I am Amanda Najib and a proud member of the class of 2018. When I first found out that I was going to be the student speaker, I, like any child seeking their immigrant parents' approval, called up my father and shouted in excitement, Baba, I got it. I'm gonna speak at graduation. And like most immigrant fathers might, he lovingly responded, you better not mess this up. <laughs> you see what my father was so eloquently trying to say was that as a first generation Palestinian American, he is particularly aware that opportunities like going to an Ivy League school and getting a platform like this do not come along very often and you have to take advantage of it when it does. My father was born under military occupation, so when he immigrated to this country, $400 in his pocket, he could not have imagined where I would be standing today. As Palestinians displaced and dispossessed from all that their families had worked for and intended to leave for them, my parents raised me with a constant reminder that a US citizenship was a blessing, but the best thing they could ever give me give me was an education. They taught me this simple truth. Education is the most powerful tool we have to change this world. And once you have it, it cannot be taken away from you. That is a truth we have all carried with us to Teachers College. At TC, I quickly learned that I was not alone in my passion for social justice. In a first semester course, Professor Hamry immersed us in anti-racist critical pedagogy and progressive education. She took the passion we brought to the classroom and channeled it and guided us through the process of channeling it into action. That was just the first of many classes that helped turn us from aspiring educators into activist educators. In one way or another, all of us came to TC on a mission to change this world. And our journey here at TC has taught us how to take ownership of what shakes and moves us to open the doors of our classrooms, of our movements, and of our lives to let that passion in. And that is what an intentional education does. This year we learned valuable lessons from the survivors of the Parkland shooting, who became students enacting monumental change and leading a national movement. Their incredible courage is something we should all aspire to. And while I commend these students for their bravery, people of color do not share the same privilege as their white and middle class counterparts, not here in New York City, nor across the globe. We must see and learn from the young leaders of Black Lives Matter, who will not be silent while unarmed black youth are gunned down time and time again, while black girls are suspended at three times the rate of white girls, all while these same schools are filling our prisons with black and brown bodies. And we must see and learn from a 17-year-old Ahad Tamimi who sits in an Israeli prison cell half a world away, pulled from her home, verbally assaulted, mistreated, and sentenced to eight months in prison, all because she refuses to be silent and watch her country burn. These children have become more than just a voice. They've inspired movements for change. They have inspired action. Here at TC, we become educators and leaders determined to support the movements that inspire us and to support all children 
educationally and creatively, so that they too may become activists. I stand here a product of the intentional and transformative education my parents so sternly insisted on, and unwaveringly committed to educating youth across the globe. As a community at Teachers College, we stand together in the face of adversity, all of us educators banding together for justice. To the class of 2018, I know we carry on this legacy that both precedes and will long outlive us. And in these halls and in our classrooms, we have learned not to be silent. As Audre Lord once said, your silence won't protect you. And I'd add, it definitely won't change the world. I think of my peers here at Teachers College, educators, musicians, artists, historians, students bright enough to succeed in any field, but brave enough to pursue the work that they love. I can't wait to see what amazing things we do for this world and what legacies we create. Congratulations, fellow graduates of the class of 2018. Now let's go out and make this world tremble. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome master's students and candidates from the Teachers College Music and Music Education Program, performing This Is Me, Music and Lyrics by Benj Pasek and Justin Paul, arranged by Mac Huff. I'm not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are. I'll let them break me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us, for we are glorious. When the sharpest words wanna cut me down, when the sand of love gonna drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. This is 
who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. To the beat I, I drum. I make no apologies. This is me. And now to recognize each of the master's degree candidates are Tom Rock, Vice Provost of Student Affairs, and Christine Rome, Associate Provost. Good afternoon. At this time, it gives us great pleasure to read the names of those candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees at Teachers College, Columbia University. All degrees will be conferred at the Columbia University ceremony on Wednesday. Thank you very much. And now, the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees. We'll begin by inviting the graduates in the Department of Arts and Humanities. Jared Morris. Eliana Romero. Joseph Siniscalci. Casey Nezin. Erica Castro. Sarah Merchant. Olivia Gallagher. Ayala Glass. William Reese. Allison Barclay. Anderson Smith. Caitlin Husko. Ching Jin. Chen Su. Duan Chao. Yuan Cheng. Chunden Zem. Stephanie Watts. Chelsea Wan. Lauren Briali. Shuhei Wang. Alexandra Lazaridas. Gungi Ye. Shu Yuan Young. Haosi Li. Katina Tibbets. Wen Cheng Chang. Louise Hunt. Ge Yu. Bing Han. Tian Yu Zhan. Julia Basile. Heather Moy. Jesse King. Eileen Orr. Ashley Wong. Yan Ying Wong. Tara Dennington. Robin Stieglitz. Julie Ko. Paulette Alger Haddock. Graham Pierce. Lindsay Ma. Cindy Wong. Gogo Wang. Janine Ga. Eva Dines. Edwin Harris. Yes. Joanna Giordano. 
Quinong Lee. Alexandra Glassman. Francisco Escobar. Jennifer Taylor. Lee Young Young. Allison Reisinger. Evan Devian Stevano. Jennifer Ku. Matthew Yi. Delia. Delia Flores. Hiroshi Haga. Nina Chow. Shen Zhang. Yangang Elsa Lee. Ran Shaw. Caitlin Vandermoss. Christine Kamimura. Joshua Goodwin. Shannon Martin. Alexandra Bellavo. Rachel Wong. Jody Mikesell. Nakanishi Yuko. Harris Cabrera. Ari Imori. Mina Piradaji. Annette Lee. Samara Chaudhry. Caitlin Barry. Austin Yoon. Christine Jeanette Williams. Tim Hausman. Eric Johnson. Nadia Kine. Deborah Malouf. Alexandra Huberweiss. Samantha Mullins. Lauren Dottavio. Annie Yan. Rebecca Fishman. Deborah Cuellar Parahan. Ling Lopez. Jessica Spinoza. Tyler Mason Draffin. Monica Bartholomew. Jacqueline Briggs. Mary Ansley Moon. Natasha Ambria Henry. Stephanie Jordat. Isabella Gavilia. Jennifer Flores. Nicholas Pryor. Christopher Karen. Rachel Heyman. John Lalina. Bryant Montalvo. Ariel Brosh. Emma Pinchu Liu. Monica Jankowski. Jack Wangchong Liu. Mitchell Lang. Elizabeth Adler. Julie Sullivan. Larian Mariola Patterson Parmsford. Rebecca Wadlington. Jeremy Medina Watson. Maria Sebastian. Carrie Francis. James Todd. Fernando L. Garcia Rodas. Max Marslin. Haley DeLuca. <laughs> Melanie Levine. Rob Hansen. <laughs> Shayna Ahmed. <laughs> Avery DeMaria. <laughs> Margaret Myers. <laughs> Laura Fox. <laughs> John Eccles. <laughs> Miriam Varjak. Brianna Baker. Jaina Marimoto. 
Samuel Wilson Smith. Sukyung Chai. Galen Byrne. Iran Lee. Jacob Kafaro. Margaret Richardson. Avery Forbes. Sarah Cho. Stephanie Mitten. Jaehee Cho. Donghyun Kim. Jillian Jacob. Leora Sanchez Viejas. Zilu Chen. Trisha Jeanette Barton. Shu Ting Zen. Charlicia Joy Paul. Kelsan Yangla. Rosalind George. Tingyu Guo. Ye Chung Hu. Yi Chen Dong. Kayla Rose Jason. Peng Yang Lin. Jamie Ham. Maureen Darcy. Wei Wan. Desiree Calamari. Catherine Crescenzo. Catherine Cramp. <laughs> Aneta Havrilevich. Catherine Gould. <laughs> Stephanie Teo. Amanda Kappa. Emily Lawrence. Elizabeth Murphy. Olivia Swisher. <laughs> Amelia Lakoff Paquette. Regina Lim. <laughs> Michael Sobolak. Hawaii Wong Bibi Tran. Abram De Bruin. Sophie Mendelssohn. Sheila O'Shea. Yulia Skurska. Michelle St. John Dennerstein. Edward Iverson. Ilya Benjamin Washington. Evdokia Sotaropoulos. Marisol Cantu. Hazal Kalichi. Sue Young. Brian Castle. Chai Chai Wu. Charles Riley III. Cho Hong Lee. Alec Llewellyn. Morong Shu. Pilar Vikuna. Jian Li. Ji Yi Zhang. Shantan Wang. Nora Chen. Yana Li. Min Young Sun. Zhu Shen Young. Patrick Morgan Barry Flynn. Xu Yu Zhang. Ayanda Delamba. Suman Park. Rebecca Schwartz. Tiffany Probasco. No Sun. Gwyneth Epstein. Olympia Tahari. Amanda Deering. 
Christina Garcia Montez. Dominique Lester. Kate Fernari. John Fleming. Jessica Lewis. Shira Engel. Caroline Drew. Trudy Moy. Madeline Horan. Jenny Clark Schiff. Emily Gifford Smith. Jonathan Acampora. Caitlin Varga. Leslie Batamozzi. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Arts and Humanities please stand and recognize our graduates. Congratulations. We now welcome the graduates in the Department of Curriculum and Teaching. Anushka Pei. Syriana Janine Abu. Aaron Milton. Natalie Flores. Yaara Pinhas. Chinera Harris. Christine Cherichella. Georgia Halliday. Brielle Welch. Julie Waters. Marsha Thorne. Ashley Casella. Natasha Nugent. <laughs> Natasha Sokoto. Jishan Ahmed. Olivia Brothers. Eric Klimowicz. Margaret Peralt. Hazel Michelle Lee. Lauren Roth. Thandar So. Sarah Kaufman. Hermin Shermin. Erica Rubin. <laughs> Hannah Jane Choi. Chelsea Katz. <laughs> Steve Sadenberg. <laughs> Laura Bowen Pope. <laughs> Jean Meyer. <laughs> Catherine Lyons. Leslie Manuela Nunez. Rebecca Levy. Isabella Atagracia Espinal. Clarissa Maripodi Bovi. Flor Natalia Urguez. Deandra Parks. Christian Ramos. Jahan Grunty. Zoe Ayubi. Stephanie Small. Escorted by Xavier Williams. Huda Balush. Pauline Morales. Jalissa Tanis. Destiny Moore. Dorothy Kupke. Jennifer Renee Taylor. Jen Wong. Amanda Najib. Sherry Plummer. Dana Nassau. 
Elizabeth Petrenko. Allison Mullen. Samantha Nadal. Danielle Suskind. Kamakshi Visvunathan. Amy Hoff. Anna Matthew. Kelsey Sheehan. Xixing Mao. Lindsay Golden. Hannah Chapman. Casey Leeds. Sarah Kerwin. Lindsay Rosenbaum. Paige Brennan. Rachel Samuels. Caitlin Hoffer. Bridget Meyer. Emily Blagden. Jumi Park. Logan Zwicky. Yunji Zhou. Autumn Becker. Yang Yi Wang. Michael Costa. Yunan Nu. Zoe Abstarsik. Keshin Chen. Bridget Miller. Narisha Bansali. Catherine Zug. Catherine Rao. Carl Shimatero. Alexandra Luciani. Amy Lujak. Alexis Zeman. Noor Jalul. Iyana Wayne Hirschberg. Brooks Weber. Allison Baker. Jennifer Fernandez. Emily Radeska. Kathleen Walsh. Suzanne Stewart. Jillian Christian. Jessica Siprel. Emily Cobert. Alexandra Abarca. Olivia Heimowitz. Katie Shi. Kara Danielle Singleton. Juliette DeButt. Dulce Marie Fletcher. Lindsay O. Aliyah Shalabi. Eliana Mendez Ruiz. Stephanie Fisher. Brianna Jensen. Bridget Sheehan. Avni Tandon. Dulce Aguiera. Caitlin Bornholt. Regina Elberg. Jacqueline Scriber. Megan Dunn Raiderstrong. Carly Jaff. Cara Petrino. Megan Fortier. Amanda Densmore. Amanda Brodsky. Rashida Moore. Emma Preston. Martha St. Jean. Jessica Huang. Saima Ali. Allison Arthur May. Terrace Grant. Emily Alverson. Muching Hu. Edward Hodson. Yang Zhao. Anna Han. 
Alana Laskin. Vivian Yen. Will the students from the department of, and, and faculty from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching please stand and recognize our graduate. And would all of our students and all of our faculty please stand and recognize our amazing graduates. And now, for the presentation of the candidates, please welcome Provost Thomas James. Please be seated. President Furman, Mr. Rickert, trustees, faculty, staff, and guests, it is my great pleasure as Provost of the College to present you the master's candidates from Teachers College. Please hold your applause until we are finished. Would the Master of Arts candidates please stand and be recognized and remain standing? Would the Masters of Science candidates please stand to be recognized and remain standing? Would the Masters of Philosophy candidates please stand be recognized and remain standing. Would the Master of Education candidates please stand, be recognized, and remain standing? President Furman, I ask you to recommend these students for the granting of their master's degrees Wednesday morning at the Columbia University commencement exercises. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marion Boltby, the president of the Teachers College Alumni Association. Alumni, let me say that again, alumni. It is my distinct pleasure to formally welcome you to the Teachers College Alumni Association. As you stand here before this esteemed group and alongside your peers, we look on with great pride. Today, you join our Alumni Association, a network of over 90,000 professionals comprised of graduates from a myriad of academic backgrounds and all walks of life who have created an incredible legacy. You are now a part of that legacy. Your fellow Teachers College alumni have made a global impact, shaping many fields of inquiry and practice. They have done so through their leadership, tenacity, experience, and wisdom. They have also done so because of the people like the ones around you today who form your support systems and a network of peer mentors. Many would argue that they have done so because of their teacher's college preparation. We know that you too will follow in these footsteps and make your own mark. Just as you occasionally needed support during your time at TC, we know you will need similar resources as you embark on your careers and we encourage you to look to Teachers College. I'm here today to tell you how valuable your participation in our alumni association can be. We are colleagues and collaborators, supporters and challengers, mentors and mentees, and most importantly, we are your peers. What keeps us all together is our alma mater, Teachers College. While everyone has had a different journey, 
I'm certain that no one's path leading to this time and place was free of challenges. I'm also certain that along the way you found inspiration, insight, and joy. And many of you have developed what will become lifelong friendships. I encourage you to stay connected to your classmates as you move forward in your careers and to tap into the deep pool of expertise and knowledge offered by the broader TC community. We hope to see you at future alumni events and also featured in future newsletters. Know that you will always have a home in TC's vibrant community. On behalf of your fellow alumni, we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, William Rickert, Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees. On behalf of the trustees of Teachers College, I want to congratulate each and every one of you on your extraordinary achievement. We thank your families and friends for joining with the faculty and staff of Teachers College to recognize you, our master's graduates of the class of 2018. We know that your contributions to improving the lives of your fellow human beings will become part of the TC legacy and will make us all proud. And one more round of applause.